Here we're making Cubanos. First thing, first, you can start off with a nice hunk of pork. Today we've got a uh, pork shoulder. Um, and we're gonna start it off with a lot of salt. Because we're gonna give this a nice long marinade because it's a thicker piece of meat, so to put flavor into it, you have to, you know, get started early. So we're just gonna eyeball this because I'm a, a bad chef. That looks like enough. Um, we're gonna play, play, uh, play pretty loose here. And the only thing that really goes wrong is you start wasting salt because it doesn't get like salt. That's like as bad as you can really go. But now we're gonna add some aromatics, which uh, I believe here is um, basil, oregano. As I'm, as I'm at to say. <laughs> And we're just, uh, um, these, you don't really need oregano, uh, I like it, and like a little bay leaf, I feel like it adds a little bit of depth to the flavor, but like, we're making, basically we're making mojo pork here, which is, uh, pretty, uh, pretty easy and simple, it's really just a, um, it's a orange and citrus based, um, marinade, so we're gonna start with a lot of this, but first I wanna get through um, these spices. So this is gonna take a lot of garlic. Um, so we have an entire head of garlic. So I'm just gonna be smashing stuff to make it go quick. I'm gonna edit this part to be a little bit quicker. But um, Cuban Cubanos sandwich actually um, entered. Uh, America, uh, when uh, Cuban uh, migrant workers were coming into the U.S., say, because um, migration within the U.S.A. used to be a lot less restricted, so Cuban migrant workers would come into Florida and work, and they needed to be fed there. Um, so you'd have, um, well, basically their version of the uh, ham sandwich being made. And then when the whole, you know, communist revolution in Cuba happened, a lot of uh, Cubans fled to America, and that, again, uh, caused a resurgence of the sandwich. Today, it's one of the iconic uh, meals within Florida, and, uh, well, honestly, it's just really, really good. But this is the first core ingredient of the Cubano, which I think, and really where a lot of Cubanos is about technique, but this is the part where it's just about like having a good recipe and knowing what to do. Um, and we're almost done with this garlic. And there we go. Now, one other ingredient, very important, is a lot of cumin. It's, you know, it's just one of those spices that's so... Despite actually being from India, it's very iconically Hispanic to people, which is interesting. We need a little bit of black pepper. This is a, this is a high production value. Uh, so, a lot of black pepper. Because that's really your only source of spiciness you're getting in this, besides the garlic, of course. But, there we go, it should hopefully where we need to be. Well, I, there's a lot of fat in Cubano, so you need to add a lot of acidity and spiciness to cut through it. Um, we have some uh, hot pickles that we made, and some, uh, and this, really. The heat on this is the only option. And the mustard, of course. Let's see here. A uh, splash of sugar. I've seen recipes that don't have this. I've seen recipes that use brown sugar. I just, uh, you know, I kind of try to do what feels right. Um, and then we have our lime. And that's, this is when we're going to start introducing wet. Now, limes, for me, are like very, very flavorful as far as citrus. But they're also, you know, expensive and rare. Um, Ideally, you would do this with just lime, but you can use a lot of orange juice and it really doesn't hurt the recipe at all. Um, 
and it adds a lot of flavor. Yeah, yeah, so Here I'm using four limes. Um, you could uh, you could use less, you could use more. Um, you just want to have that lime flavor because it's such a it's such a like really like strong flavor, and it again like a lot of what this is is cutting through a lot of fat with you know really strong acidic uh, spicy flavors. That's what really I mean that's I, really what separates the um, Cubano from just a ham sandwich is that it has these really strong and powerful flavors. Okay. And then one last lime, and then we'll move on to the orange juice, and then we give this sucker a stir, uh, make sure everything's you know getting to you know, having a conversation with everything, and then we'll uh, close her up, and she'll hang out in a fridge for probably twelve hours. You probably could do a lot less. Um, I would say you could do three hours at the minimum. I would probably say and like ideally you're like six ish but it's really just like how deep do you want that flavor to get into the meat you know so that's really what it's about here we go we have four limes of juice and then we're going to add non-branded orange juice um, Going to make some, uh, add some orange juice till it fills. Just make sure everything is dissolving in. So what we're looking for here is a uh, like garlicky, punchy, um, very high citrus flavors that will penetrate the meat and. Uh, that's where a lot of the actual flavor comes from, a lot of the spice, because a lot of the uh, other ingredients are just very like, very like one note, like this is what I do things. This is where a lot of the complexity of the meal comes from, and that's why it's so important as a central component. But uh, next time you'll see me, I'll be cooking this bad boy. Here, uh, the following day, our pork has cooked down considerably, um, falling off the bone. Uh, to that point and uh, we had these lovely rolls made and uh, we're gonna get started assembling the sandwich so first things first we're gonna want to have mustard on these so uh, it brings a lot of it brings acidity to this and with the amount of fat that we're putting on this thing between the ham and the cheese and the um, pulled pork you really need that acidity but then we're gonna um, move on to the pulled pork, which we actually have a bowl that we've uh, allowed to get some of that, you know, the grease and the juices to float off. So it's not too moist because that's kind of our enemy in this sandwich. So we're gonna start off with a pretty generous amount of pulled pork. Shoulder. Now this is a this is that mojo pork we made yesterday. It marinated and all that stuff, and it really picked up the flavor. I wish you could smell it right now. It's just it's just a garlicky, cuminy, um, citrus uh, blend. It's just delicious. Now here, traditionally you would use cut um, cured hams. Uh, for this, I'm using a um, European center cut uh, bacon. It, um, it's really smoky, and I feel like it brings a lot to the. Uh, food with that smokiness and then we follow up this um, and then I'll do it on this one second one as well and then we can see here uh, this meat is just really tender really falling apart it's uh, it's what you want because that gives you even bites otherwise you'll pull someone will bite into this and they'll pull away with like a big old chunk and that's the last thing you want um, Okay, and then next we go with our cheeses, which we're just using simple Swiss, nothing too complicated. It's um, it's just something that like adds a little bit of creaminess to the sandwich, brings it into balance. You, it's the classic ingredient. And then our last ingredient are our homemade pickles. 
Uh, uh, pickles are actually really easy. I went ab above and beyond with these ones, but really you just need a brine, maybe some vinegar and some spices. You throw it into a, uh, all into a, uh, a can and throw it in your fridge and it'll, the cucumber will just suck up all that flavor. All right, so two pickles there, one, two, three here, and then we are going to go in on our panini press. Traditionally, you'd use a plancha, which is like a panini press, but it's flat, but we're being kind of, uh, well, you work with what you have. You can see these boys stacked high with beauty. Um, and we're gonna hit them with some olive oil and then we'll, we'll cut to them on the uh, panini press. So we've hit these with a lot of olive oil and now we're closing this bad boy up and going to work. And everything's gonna start to melt down and get to know each other. Okay, we just got these off of the um, griddle back there. And uh, let's see, let's see how they turned out. Okay. And that is a uh, relatively traditional Kibara. Thank you for watching.